In today's video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at relative joint 2D. So just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my red arm. Uh, I'm not sure if I made any adjustments to my rigid body, so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that component. And then when we add the relative joint 2D, it'll add the rigid body for me again, and it'll set it to all the default values. All right, so here we go, we got the relative joint 2D. I'm just gonna start it up with its default values, and well, we can take a look at it. I'll go ahead and jump on it. it. Actually has a little bit of movement, not a whole lot, like a pixel's worth, but essentially it's just a platform. So let's go ahead and play around with it. So the first thing I wanna go ahead and play around with is this max force. This can go up to, I believe a million, right? I've never had to go that high. Right, go up to a million, it's already set to 10,000. Let's lower this down to uh, 40, 50, let's do 40. And this is the amount of force that's used to push it from this point to be in this position. So this is the force driving it to the position. We're gonna look at max torque in a minute. And that's the force used to try to rotate it into, well, this angle. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the max force first. So now when I jump on it, it goes around. And take note, it goes through this platform here. Now this platform does have a box collider on it, but it does not have a rigid body. If you put a rigid body on it, it will stop. But if you want this platform to interact with other colliders in your scene, you are gonna have to click the enable collision. Now this behavior changes when we go ahead and connect a rigid body to it. And we'll take a look at that when we get there. But just to demonstrate this, I've gone ahead and made the tick. And now when I jump, it won't go through it anymore. There we go. So if you want that behavior, make sure to tick the box. Right now, I don't. I'm going to go ahead and untick it. And we're going to look at max torque. And I don't know, let's set this to 10. And like I said, this controls the angle. So if I start this up, and now I jump on it. There we go. See how it spins around? And it kept hitting me. Let's go ahead and crank this back up to 1,000 for the force for the Regular force, and then for the torque, I should just be able to spin it now. <laughs> there we go. And it's constantly trying to get back to this position, this angle. I'm not sure how it got stuck there. <laughs> Let's try that again. Just to see if it's repeatable. There we go. So what's happening is that it's going, flipping over, and then when it tries to flip back, it, it's getting stuck there. If we go ahead and just move it out a bit, Apparently, it's just broken now. <laughs> All right. Let's bring it back down to 40 for this next one. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a bit so it's not so tippy. Because we're going to be looking at the correction scale. And this is really just a modifier of how much movement we're getting from these other two. So, for instance, in the case of force where something is bouncing up and down, the higher this number, the correction scale, which goes from 0 to 1, the higher the number the more it's gonna overshoot and bounce back, the smaller the number, the less it overshoots. So it gets to the spot it wants to be at much quicker. So we'll go ahead, here it is at 0.3, we'll test it out. And I'm gonna to try to get over to the side a bit here. There we go. Do it again, oh, I fell off that time. Well, no, I did not, <laughs> ride him cowboy. Let's go ahead and take a look at one. We'll crank it up to full and jump on it. And we can already see that it's, it bounces a couple more times. Let's bring it down. Oops, I fell off. Look at the bounce you get on that. See if I can get back up on it. Now, to be honest, I like that super bounciness that we get. Maybe not a full one, maybe something like an eight. <laughs> Away we go. I fell off again. But you get the idea, right? The greater the number, the more it overshoots, the more movement I like to think you get out of it. Now for the next one, the auto configure offset. If you go ahead and check it, it allows you to adjust these values independently. With it checked, when you move your game object, it moves out point for you. And if I zoom in, you get this little plus sign here, green plus sign. And we'll grab the hand over here, the move tool. We have the green one there as well. These are the angles and the places that it's trying to get you to. If we go ahead and uncheck that, 
we can now move the game object independently of the, the spot. And we can still change this spot with the values over here. If you so wish. Now, when I go ahead and hit start, it's going to jump there. Because remember, that's where it wants to be. And that's the angle it wants to be at. So let's go ahead and change this a bit for the angler. Let's go ahead and set it to 45 degrees. And I'm going to move it back this way just a bit. Uh, I want it close to the center. Well, let's go ahead. We'll hit play. And now it's going to fly over there and it becomes a lethal weapon. <laughs> Run for your lives. I should have put the... Uh... <laughs> I guess I should have went ahead and put that back down to 0.3. I'm going to go hide under here, man. <laughs> But take note of the angle it's trying to get to, right? It's no longer straight across, even though that's what it started out as. So you can control the angle that it's trying to get to through the angular offset. Uh, I'm going to go back, fix this up. Let's bring it down here a bit. And we'll take a look at the breaking forces. So just like with the other joints that have the ability to be broken, force dictates how much force it can take before it breaks. Let's do... Uh, it's got 40 there. Let's do 41. I'll go ahead, start it up, jumping on it. And let's see what happens. So a little jump, not much. Try a big jump. No, I think 40. Uh, we need more force than 40, apparently, to break it. Now, if you time these the jumps right, you can actually get quite a bit of height. Like I said, this is probably one of my favorites joints to play with it just i don't know just it just it's just fun you don't have to do any coding a couple settings you can do a little bit of coding in the back end to change parameters as game settings change we'll try it at 30. there we go i broke the joint and you can tell because the green disappears and it stops trying to get to where it's supposed to be i think anything yeah if it has a max force of 40 that's the max it can push so anything under 40. There we go. And of course, torque works the exact same way, but for rotation. I'm going to type in I and F to get us back to infinity. And just for the sake of argument, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Let's go ahead and make it spin. Give it enough force to break it on the spinning. There we go. 10 apparently was not a lot. Okay, so we've taken a look at enable collision. We've done the forces. We've done correction scale, which I am actually going to put back down to the default. Auto configure. So we've looked at everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at connected rigid body. And there's a lot of things we can connect. We can go ahead and connect to the player. Maybe it's some sort of balloon or something like that. You got following the player and as he runs around, it does stuff. And of course you can have it interact. Get caught. Uh, what are my forces? 40 and 40. Okay. There we go. But I can still run. And if I let go, it slowly pulls me back because of the force. Remember I said it, it tries to get used to the exact same position and also the exact same angle. If I go jump up here. Oh, maybe. Wow, it's really... There we go. Incoming. Should have put it back to one and had it flip around, make another weapon. <laughs> but I don't really want it hooked up to my player, so we'll do like we've done in the other games. Hook it up to my polygon here, which is just a rigid body... 2D. We'll take a look at it. But I have it set to be is kinematic so it doesn't fall down. And I really should go ahead and set this to ground so I can jump when I'm on it. So if we come back, click the red R, we can see where it's connected. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, it's up a little high. I'm just going to bring it down. And let's go take a look at the action. All the behaviors are the exact same except for it will not go through a collider now. Might have to reduce the force a bit just to demonstrate it a bit more. I'll bring that force down to 30 might be too low, but let's try it out anyway. As it comes down, it hits. I'm going to be standing on this edge, so it's going to cause it to tip. There we go. 30 was enough for me to actually just weigh it down, but it does not go through anymore. All right, there we go. We've taken a look at the relative joint 2D, one of my personal favorite ones. What did you guys think of it? Give you any ideas for games that you want to include this in or maybe a game completely based around this joint let me know down below in the comments
And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>